so to not just like repeat what goes on in the chapter, I uh, mm-hmm. I went and I got some some different uh, some different text. So right. there was this so there was this article uh, that was published in the New York Times, I think, two days ago or so. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> So uh, there were recently elections in the United States, not at the at the the federal level, but at, at the states. The states had elections, and so anytime there's elections, you know, people are talking about what happened and why it happened and their analyses and stuff. In any case, okay. uh, there was this particular guest essay in the New York Times, written by a guy named Freddie mm-hmm. DeBoer or Frederick DeBoer, and so the New York Times has this uh, feature where they've got comments, which is pretty standard. Right. Um, but they also have an API that allows you to get all of the comments. Right. And extract them. So I did that and mm-hmm. I got all just the, the main comments. So I, I didn't get any of the replies. Uh, but, uh, so, so anyway, so that's what this data set is. It's just, uh, is literally uh, a two a two column data set mm-hmm. that has all of the, the head comments. Mm-hmm. And, and so that's just, you know, this is what the text looks like. So it's just some unstructured right. text. Yes. These, these are just two random, yep. two random comments. Right. And so um, in, in the book, they start with something that's already in a document term matrix. All right. Um, and, uh, and mine are obviously not. So this is a bit of, review from last week or actually two weeks ago now right uh, but from the previous chapter that mm-hmm. you know it's this pretty standard routine yeah. of just taking the comments uh, unnesting um, the tokens anti-joining mm-hmm. the stop words uh this this command is maybe a bit a bit new uh it's yeah it's it's an experimental like, like if you look at its documentation in dplyr it says life cycle experimental phase right what is the so so what it does is um it takes what would have been uh a couple lines so like you would say group by comment id uh that would be one line and then you would say count word in the next line and then maybe in the next line after that you would say ungroup but it does that all in one line. Ah. So, so it'll say, so basically within groups, count the word frequency is what it's doing. And so in the group here well, is each really? individual comment. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I, I like it. It makes things but, but the output is not that, right? So the end output is not. So the end output, so, so what this outputs is basically a familiar looking, um, yeah, a pretty familiar looking. Uh, oh, count. I wish we like, can see the outlook, like how this, the output of these, then you cast it after so that, yeah. Sure. I mean, I, uh, I, mean, I, can, I can do that. Um, so if I go there, I can go to this, the document I used to create it. So, um, so here, if I just take oh. this. Um, okay. This. Yeah, I can see the screen. And so this is what this will look like. Uh, I'm trying to think, should I? No, I'll just print it as is. So that. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. But yeah. Okay. So, Does it call, uh, group by, by the ID? Are you sure? It didn't, right? It, it did, and then it got rid of it. So it's, it will give the exact same output as if I were to do group by, oops, my keyboard is in a different language. Uh, a group by comment ID. And then I say count word. So it'll give the exact same output as this. Uh, and this says groups here. And so, and then if I do on. Uh, right. So, so this, yeah. What's the name of um, that thing? Um, so it's Let with me. groups. With group. Uh huh. And so it's if you, right? and so if you, if you look, this is what I was referring to earlier. Uh, 
So who knows? Maybe it'll disappear someday. Uh, so right now, its life cycle is experimental. Ah. Uh, okay. Yeah, but yeah, anyway. Uh, so I think it's a pretty neat, pretty neat thing. Mm -hmm. In any case, so so yeah. So at the end, uh, we get this. Um, and then and so after that, we cast your document term matrix, and we get the document term matrix. And so um, there are a hundred. Uh, sorry, one thousand one hundred twenty-eight rows mm -hmm. documents and then you know a very typical of a, a text data set there are quite a few more features in the data set than uh than observations right um, mm -hmm. and sparsity is basically everything so there's a lot mm -hmm. a lot of zeros uh and i didn't look into what this is but that's a pretty suspiciously long long word there so if i had done more really you know if, if one were doing due diligence, you do a lot more uh, EDA mm -hmm. in this case, or you know, exploratory data analysis, um, but mm -hmm. I, I have not. So, um, so I didn't include in, in my notes a lot of um, explanation of the, of, um, let's see. Oh. I didn't include a lot of explanation of what uh, the, the algorithm is. But I can do that. I can do that here. So, um, so the the way that, like the main way, at least that I, I've seen topic models done uh, or fit mm -hmm. is through this latent Dirichlet algorithm. That's the LDA here. Okay. Yeah. Uh huh. And um, in, in the in the book and elsewhere, they make a point of it to say that what that does is simultaneously. Um, determine the mixture of topics that is in a given document and hmm. the probability, uh, let's see, the probability that a given topic sort of spits out a given word. So they, the way they put it is topics are mixtures of words and documents are mixtures of topics. Okay. That's the way people always say it. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to. I'm not convinced it's the best way to say it, but it's what people say. So I'm not going to yeah. fight them. Okay. Um, yeah. But what's, um, I mean, in, in the book, they kind of just, they kind of just run with it. They don't really explain a lot in the sense that, I mean, running an LDA model is incredibly simple. You just take your document term matrix mm -hmm. as the first argument to LDA, which is from the topic models package. And one um, parameter you have to fix is the number of, uh, topics. Yeah. What about the, the method? Um, is it automatic here? Um, I think uh, uh, by default, which method is that is using for the LDA? The default is them. Okay. So uh -huh. what can you say about the two different methods? Uh, not much. Uh, in fact, I'm not, I'm, I think that VEM stands for variational expectation maximization. Okay. Uh, oops. Um, Let's see, I'm pretty sure it's variational something. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, variational expectation maximization. Right, so it's LDA algorithm, right? Yeah, so it's, it's one method of, of you know, fitting the, the, the LDA algorithm. Mm. Right. Um, and if you, if you look in the documentation for LDA, mm -hmm. uh, you can see that if you use different methods, you have slightly different parameters you can control. Ah, uh, yeah, and yeah. So sure. I, and so I didn't, I didn't dig into that, but yeah. they're there and the things so that the, a person should probably know about if this really function can... LDA was uh, it test tidy model or it is from different is tep, from topic modeling, right? The LDA. Yeah, it's it's from this one. From topic, topic model. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, who created this package? It's not from the uh, uh, Julia Silvia, right? No, no, it's not. It's from someone who's, I forget, I think it's a woman's name and it makes me think that she's like Swiss, but I, I could just okay. really be, uh, mm -hmm. I could really just be inventing that. Um, I can see. So if we do LDA uh, at the bottom here, author this uh, this is the person uh, 
So who knows where that person's from? I mean, okay. her parents probably know. Maybe it's his parents. Maybe I'm just way off. In any case. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. So let's go back to this. Um, and, oh, and so when you fit it with the, so earlier you asked if the default was the VEM or Gibbs. Uh, one way to see that the default is VEM is that when I don't specify any method mm -hmm. in LDA, the mm -hmm. model I get back is, it says an LDA VEM topic model with two topics. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And if I want Gibbs, what I have to do is I have to specify Gibbs. And then when I print that out, I get an LDA Gibbs topic model with two topics. Mm -hmm. um, and one, one thing that is beyond the uh, scope of, of, of this is that you can, if you have a priori knowledge of what topics are likely to be present, you mm -hmm. can do what's called a seated topic model. Here. Okay. And so apparently this only works with Gibbs sampling. But um, so there, so seed words with their additional weights and for the prior parameters can be specified okay. in order mm -hmm. to fit seeded topic models. So that's a possibility yeah. in okay. LDA. Is that, and then the last note in kind of this technical streak is that there's another package that um, people are using called mm -hmm. STM and that's a structural topic model. Um, and there it's, it's more advanced as I write just as a comment, it allows for much more fine-grained control. It also allows for uh, you to include covariates. So instead of just words, the text mm -hmm. itself, predicting what topic comes out, uh, you can have facts, you know, metadata about the documents influencing okay. what the topic is. Right. And so um, anyway, so, so once you've done this incredibly, you know, the one line task of, of fitting, a, yeah. fitting a model, um, there after that, at least in the book, what they, they pretty much do is discuss um, how to explore that. So I created this function called beta plot. Mm -hmm. um, and what it does is uses the tidy function from Broom to get out what's the it's called the beta matrix from the LDA model, which the beta matrix is the probability that the, a topic chooses a given word as a, a way to think of it. Okay. Um, and so then I just reordering stuff. And, um, and so, so, for, so, so this was an interesting case where I think that the topic modeling didn't really work. And it's, mm -hmm. it's interesting to see times when stuff doesn't work. And the reason I, I was, what I thought might happen in this, and I, I didn't like read the comments uh, before doing this because I kind of wanted to go into it blind just to see what would happen. And I thought yeah. that maybe mm -hmm. in, in discussions of politics, right? If uh, even if two people see the same thing, they have their hobby horses and they want to talk about different things. So I yeah. thought that maybe uh, people would just start talking about different things here. Uh, and I thought that maybe, you know, different topics would emerge from, mm. or would be picked up by yeah. the, the algorithm. And it seems to not really be the case. Um, so in a two topic model, you, we, I mean, there's socialist, socialism, um, and, you know, you hear, see socialism and socialists are just number mm. two and three. So one and two for topic one, two and three, right, for topic uh, two. And I mean, there's socialists down there. So what, I mean, again, if I had spent more time doing this and really wanted to, um, to work on it. Uh, what do you mean topic it, one? What do you mean topic one, topic two? So when the, the algorithm uh, sort of ingests all the words in the, docu in the document topic matrix, and yeah. I specified that, that K equals two, or that there are two ah. topics. Ah, okay, here. okay, I see, I see, I see, I remember, yes. Yeah. And so one thing that I, I didn't mention is that this is in the, the machine learning world universe. Uh, this is unsupervised learning. So, yeah, so, yeah. so these are just inferred from the data. There's no, um, there's no indication that yeah. there are actually two topics. I just said there are two topics and it said, okay, let me do the best job of yeah. getting two topics. Yeah, I mean, on top of what you said, this is unsupervised learning. In fact, now they are using neural topic modeling. 
what I mean by neural traffic modeling is like using deep learning approaches uh, yeah. to do traffic modeling. They are also have seen one work related to that. Yeah. Using, uh, using neural network. And I assume that they're doing, you know, I, I wonder, no, I don't know anything about those. I was just wondering, I mean, hopefully that's something that we'll talk about in the next. Yeah, it, exactly. it would be even It would be even beyond the next course, actually, because the next course is going to be uh, supervised learning. Oh, and yeah, so, it's supervised. Yeah, so in this, so. Yeah, but I think we can touch with that using embedding. Um, I'm not sure how it will, but I see some couple of work, um, mm -hmm. which is neural um, topic modeling approach, something like that, yeah. Uh, well, and, and a plot, you know, going forward with this. So, uh, with this beta plot function, I can just keep, I can give it a different model. The, so now I set, when I set the time number of topics to three. Um, so th this one, yeah, I can start to see some, uh, I mean, it looks like you can start to see differentiation, but you know, maybe not. So this one, the preferred terms are socialism people left and this one seems to be maybe about the institution of the democratic party mm -hmm. um and this one is really just the word socialism a bunch of times and then capitalism so again so i, I would not say that this is a particularly successful usage uh here i'm not gonna like go into it but you know th there's a, a four topic model so yeah, but, but why are you saying this is not good? Because I think uh, what I was saying, like I can see the topic is predicting is something related to the, uh, uh, the discussion. Is that right? Yeah, I, I just think that the way I was thinking about it is that if, um, if I because were in, in charge fact, of a publicity fact, company okay, and I presented this, mm -hmm. I don't feel like I could say anything very convincing <laughs> ah, okay. to anybody. Here. Yeah, yeah. So I think the idea for topic modeling is um, because now you already know where these topics are coming from. You are mm -hmm. the one that actually grabbed this topic. So, for example, you are working in a company and um, uh, or somewhere else, and you are just given a bunch of text and right. say, okay, run a topic model, try to find out where um, the topic where this corpus comes from. You don't know whatsoever the corpus where it emanated from you know what i mean so when you run the topic modeling for example and you have this one for example top beta one where you have socialism social social government socialist capitalism what will you infer saying this corpus come from what can you say about this corpus um which topic the actually the uh this topic modeling is telling our corpus come from yeah i so so I mean, I did since I read the chapter. I know that that that's what they do, what David Robinson and Julia Silky do. But I wonder, I, I wonder how fre frequent that actually is. I, I just in my in my mind, a much more common uh, usage of topic modeling would be, for example, again, I'm I'm in a business, and um, I want to know what people are saying about my business on Twitter or like what dimensions of my company, mm -hmm. what types of conversations are happening about my company. So what I would do is, uh, you know, I have some fancy access to the Twitter API. I would look for all the times that my business is mentioned uh, in a hashtag. And then I would run a topic model on that to see like maybe there's one type of comment that's more about like, um, you know, my customer service. There's one type of comment that's about this new product launch. There's one type of comment uh, you know, a sort of group of comments about um, users, you know, maybe my users have a good yeah. or bad representation. Yeah. reputation. Yeah. So that, yeah. to me, that's, I imagine, now I haven't done okay. any sort of so scientific me, inquiry. I, yeah. Go ahead. So, um, I think um, what you're saying is like, you want to find what is commonly being talked about, about your company. Is that correct? What yeah, are some yes. So what are some of the things that are common, people commonly discuss on Twitter, on your, com on your company? You want to find that thing that people mostly talk about. Is that correct? I mean, that's my, I imagine that, like that. I just yeah. came up with so, that. So, so, so I think 
um, it's, it's, it's more or less um, because this one is not like some kind of business perspective. The whole topic model and idea, I think, is trying to find what actually um, it's, it's like clustering based on what people um, have written most often. So um, what I can say here is that like this socialism, uh -huh. people in this corpus, a lot, all of the people talk most about socialism. So if you look at the, about the percentage of people that are writing, the percentage yeah. that talk about socialism is like maybe that is the top percentage. The percentage right. maybe for socialists in some way, not really necessarily, but um, I think what topic modeling is, is trying to look at what people talk about quite often. If a thing that is not talked quite often, you will not even see it here. For example, here, we will not see um, the name of any particular company or the name of the author or anything like that because it doesn't have any proportion a lot in the data. So I think, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, <laughs> this one is because like, um, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, we are just trying to look at what this corpus, what, what is the topic about this corpus? Where does it come from? And I, I think given this, some kind of topics which relate to um, uh, politi politics, we can say this corpus come from politics. And we can say, okay, what people are really about talking about is they are talking about the uh, socialism, socialist, left, and yeah. So if it is like um, corpus or Twitter corpus about your company, then mm -hmm. instead for you to see socialism, you see like bad connection, bad product, do you understand? You see like, oh, fantastic service. You see like, good service. I love the company. Oh, the, the, uh, uh, if the company, for example, um, they, they, they have bad repetition in some way, you see a lot of um, stuff that people talk about that, oh, their service is not good. Oh, their social service is not good. Some, some of the, pe some thing that people usually comment about. I don't know if uh, uh, that is what how I understand it. Yeah, I mean, you know, so then I, I don't know. I mean, if, if we go down that route, we might sort of end up talking about sentiment analysis, but <laughs> yeah, you know, um, but, uh, but yeah, yeah. Um, so, so I don't know, you know, um, actually one, one thing that, again, if I, if I would have had more time, the that yeah. STM, STM package that I referenced above, um, mm -hmm. right here, uh, it actually has one thing that's really nice in its documentation is that okay. it, it includes, uh, I, I don't know, a list of, I forget now, somewhere between 20 and 50 articles that are application, like journal peer reviewed articles that appear in journals that are examples of how people professionally use topic models ah so, okay okay so yeah so i that, hear one also github um with a lot of uh, from tinker um github uh, with a lot of uh, topic modeling stuff i would also look at that one if you have time. okay yeah no sure um okay. and so just so so this was in the book uh these these beta plots yeah um, that that show you the words most characteristic of a given um a given topic. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I thought was was funny, or I I, I don't know, people um, hate word clouds. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know why. Well, I think it's because um, they encode poor, like like the size of a word, the size of font, is not mm -hmm. a good way to encode uh, frequency information. Okay. Okay. I, yeah. I, I, like this, I think is. Is yeah, much better yeah. I mean, because you look at party, then you kind of take a vertical line down. Yeah. And you see, yeah. Uh huh. But one thing that's also, uh, I mean, it helped me make my understanding of what this this beta is concrete is that, and again, here I'm using within groups. So for each topic, if you add up the entire column of of beta, and I should, I can um, just th this will. Let me just go back to R so I, to make this a bit more clear what's going on. 
Um, so if I go here and I look at VM, so um, so if I so for like topic one, so so for each what this beta matrix is is a uh, like the unit of analysis is like the topic term combination. So mm -hmm. there's, you know, topic one, achievable, topic two, achievable, to topic three, achievable. And the same for every single word. It, mm -hmm. it has a certain beta for each topic. And so mm -hmm. that's what this is. And so um, the question is like, what happens if you sum up this entire column? And if you do that within each topic, what happens, so it's the sum of beta, is you get one. And the reason you get one is because what beta is, is the probability that if that topic okay. generates okay. a word, okay. Right, okay. Yes. it's that word. Okay. So, so the fun thing you can, you can do with that then is uh, sample from that distribution at the probability given by beta. And you can, <laughs> you can actually just create sort of a theoretical word cloud like if so in this in this case i created a, a function word cloud sim and for topic one so this would be like a theoretical word cloud from topic one ah. um uh -huh. so what i just i did was i drew ten thousand words so this is like uh someone's okay. just writing in topic one and they mm -hmm. they write a ten thousand word document like what would be the what would be the words and then that's yeah. what it'd be and and so i thought that was uh, I don't know. It was just something that helped me understand more about about beta, and also I thought it's it's funny to do word clouds since everyone else okay. hates them. Um, <laughs> and, and and I don't think they they reveal too much, but really it's it's the same. Like what you see is the same basic idea as as these. It's just a different way of presenting it. Yeah, of presenting yeah. This, people this, love this thing. people love this thing a lot. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so that was that. So, so betas are, are one um, statistic that comes out of the, uh, the, the LDA algorithm. Another one is gamma. Yeah. And, and what gamma does is, um, so for each document, um, you get a, so for, okay, so really each, um, each document will be, uh, like a certain percentage will be, you would say it's like, like, okay, just for this example. So this document uh, has a, according to the algorithm, has a 47% chance or 47.3% chance of being in topic one. Okay. Uh -huh. And so on, and you could go down and, you know, uh, but notice that a lot, I mean, one interesting thing, I suppose, is that a lot of these are around 50%. Um, they, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, here's one that's exactly 50%, at least to three decimal places. Um, yeah, and anyway, so, so that, that's what this, this gamma matrix is that you can get out of the LDA model. Okay. Um, and so, so, and now, now I did something that's really different from the book because in the book, uh, what they did was they took a labeled data set and basically wanted to test LDA, uh, which is, which is interesting, but it's something that I think practically would never happen. Yeah. Um, so, so I, I took this as, I just took the data I had and thought, okay, well, what are some things that you might want to know about the, the gammas? Mm -hmm. And so, so for this um, two topic model, one thing that you can do is just plot a histogram of the, the topic? probabilities that it's in topic one. Um, okay. And so, so there you see that you have this. This is interesting. Uh, yeah, is that most of what happened is that, you know, like for example, I mean, I, at least 90, probably 99% yeah. of the uh, documents are between 45% and 55%. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you get very few out. And so uh, also you could, and so just putting that on the entire, so notice this is actually a fairly reduced X axis, right? Because probabilities go from zero to one. Mm -hmm. and, and this, so, if you really want to, and so another way of presenting this would be a box plot and it looks incredibly squished mm -hmm. because if I, because I extended the, the axis out from zero to one 
And there you see that, I mean, basically every, like, you know, 75% of the data is like at 50%, basically. So you're not going to get, so, so, yeah. so this would be a nice, this is a nice visualization or a nice statistic because then you know, like, okay, my, my document, or sorry, my uh, model didn't really separate out topics very much. Mm. Like everything's mostly a coin flip. Um, but this was something that was not covered in the book. And uh, what I'm about to show you is something that was not covered in the book. And I think is uh, maybe not, it, it's good to know this, uh, is that, so the, this algorithm is, uh, is, has an element of randomness to it. It has like a stochastic elements. So you don't always get the same result. Mm -hmm. And mm. nine out of 10 times with this data set, you get this, mm -hmm. this result. Okay. But okay. if you mess around with the, the seed enough, so the initial random state, and again, mm -hmm. so here I'm just doing the same thing. I'm fitting. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. I'm just over, mm -hmm. I shouldn't have done that. I, I overwrote the, the model, but yeah. it's fine. Uh, so if you see the eight, uh, 827, you run mm -hmm. it, this is mm -hmm. what you get. Oh, shit. <laughs> what happened? It just, weird stuff happens. I mean, that's actually what I, I said as a caption. Weird stuff happens when the seed is 827. Uh, but now what? you see that, yeah, yeah. You get this extremely bimodal result where basically everything is in topic <laughs> one or everything is in topic two. So can we trust this? I don't know. Uh, I mean, that's a that's a whole nother that's an, another can of worms. But um, no, it's actually not another can of worms. But it is it is. There are ways of measuring the goodness of LDA fits and uh, and stuff. Okay. So so you would ultimately want to compare models. But I think it's a good caveat. I mean, what what I what I literally did was I created a chunk in R, and I just set the seed like each time the seed would be set. To a different one, but I would keep an in, like information as far as what seed it was, and I just kept mm -hmm. clicking until I got this. And I think it took me about, like I said, ten times. Okay. So maybe the thing to think there mm. is that, oh well, nine out of ten times you get something like this. Um, but okay. but you know, one out of ten times you'll get something like this. And I don't know. I don't know what the correct thing to do there is. I mean, one thing you could do is save all those results and then average. You, you could run it. I mean, in this case, this model runs incredibly fast. So you could very feasibly run it a thousand times, save all of those, and then average, you know, the thousand uh, gammas for each document and say like, well, mm. uh, that, I mean, you could do that. I'm not sure if, what the normal practice is, but Anyway, the, the point of this was just to show that uh, with a slightly different initial starting point, you can get really different results. Right, right. Uh -huh. Because but just the to, point. The point is, um, yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay. Wow, this is something <laughs> really weird. Yeah, weird. I, I will actually. This is interesting. I will. Um, um, um I, I think you you can um because like our chapters we have not pushed them to github i will ask huh. i will push my own also um uh, uh ask uh, uh, Layla to push her own I, I think this is interesting we need to push your own because i will practice your own uh, so that <laughs> even with your data as well so yeah. uh, you can uh, full request for the book uh, the section so that you can pull uh, push this one as well okay yeah, yeah, no problem. This is really interesting. I will try to practice with you also your data. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, you're welcome to it. Um, and then uh, this is this is now getting towards the end. Um, so this is so the, the, all these were the the two topic models. Mm -hmm. um, with the three topic models, the same the same idea. You just have a document and a certain probability that's in a given topic. Interestingly, this one mm -hmm. um, was. So it's a three topic model, but in a way it's similar to, um, well, anyway, so you get, so for example, this, this document has basically, according to the model, no probability of being in topic three. Whereas this one is a coin flip for being in topic two. Uh, these two documents respectively are definitely in topic one and definitely in topic three. So it's interesting to, to look at the distributions of, of gamma. Um, another thing that, that you can do 
is look at um, basically the overall probability that, or just the overall gamma for a given, um, for a given class. So like, you know, you would say in this corpus, right? You know, mm. uh, topic one makes up 35.5%, et cetera. And, um, and let's see, so then with the four topic model, I did the exact same thing. You know, you get slightly different. I mean, one thing that did not have to happen, but did happen is that they're relatively balanced, right? So you have four, mm. uh, four topics and, you know, none of them, I mean, this one is basically exactly one fourth, but then, and this one's also pretty close. And then you have two that are slightly above and, and slightly below. Um, but there are actually hyper, one thing that I'll, I'll show at the bottom in this further resources is that there are hyper parameters you can change, that you can modify, mm. that you can set, okay. I should say, that will make it more likely that you get different distributions. So instead of relatively equal prevalence of topics, you get mm. very I mean, unequal prevalences. So you can do that. And anyway, but that's more for, for the reading. Uh, then there's this, I, I don't think would be super helpful, but, um, but for some reason I did it just because I guess I could. So you can take this, um, this table, so th this data frame, Mm -hmm. And you can pivot wider such that now for each document, you have the probability uh, just in one row, you have the probability that it's in a certain mm -hmm. uh, topic. And, uh, and so you see that of course, well, so you see that these rows add up to one, which mm -hmm. makes sense. Um, and yeah, and one, one thing you can do Again, this is the part that I think is probably not super helpful, but you can actually, um, we can get rid of the document uh, row, or sorry, column, and then you, oops, and then you can just correlate the, uh, the three columns that are in, in one case, the three columns, and in another case, the four columns that remain. And now they're all gonna have negative correlations because an increase in the probability that your document is from one uh, topic will just necessarily mean that it's a decrease I mean, it doesn't, it basically means that it's a decrease in uh, the, at least the set of all their documents, or uh, sorry, the set of all their topics. Anyway, but you can see, for example, um, that, you know, if you look at um, topic two and topic one in this three topic model, they're more negatively correlated than, for example, uh, topic three and topic two. Again, okay. I don't know what you would really make of that. Um, that might be more interesting if you have a topic model with like 10 topics, then you could start to see some that are kind of unrelated and some that are, you could start to see bigger discrepancies, I suspect. Yeah, um, yeah. But I'm not sure if this, and I highly doubt that this stands up to any sort of statistical scrutiny. So probably, it's probably good not to, not to do this unless you, you've thought about it some more. I'm only doing it because no one will ever see this besides us too. So, <laughs> so I'm not really worried about it. Um, and then and then at the bottom here, I've put for further resources, uh, stuff about the hyperparameters that are not discussed in the book at all. But there's some nice visualizations of what happens when you set the, the hyperparameters to different uh, values and you can get very different results. Uh, I mean, basically results like this, where if you set the hyperparameter to one value, you'll get this. And if you set it to another value, you'll get this, but much more consistently. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Good. Um, I really enjoy the discussion. I'm glad. Yeah. I, I mean, especially how, um, because you got um, different data, we work on different data. Yeah. That makes it more lively and more practical but how do you grab those um um uh, the comment from the website how do you grab them oh uh let's see the uh how uh, um 
So uh, I need to start sharing my screen again. So, uh, so I mean, just through through R, there's there's this page. Uh, I'll, I'll go there in a second. But basically, um, you just through I mean, you send basically you send the New York Times. So okay, so the New York Times has supplied this um, API. Mm. This way to access their comments. And basically, so you send it a, a Git request, mm. uh, and then I'll get you the, the information. And then I just had to create a, uh, a, a function that just gets all of the comments. But basically, yeah, you just send a request to this URL, and it'll give you the comments. That's basically it. Wow. Uh, so old. Go ahead. Yeah, go on. Go on. Oh no, I was just gonna say, um, so I go there, um, I can show you. So the, to like practically what you'll have to do is um, go to um, NY, so developer.nyt times, sorry, nytimes.com. Mm -hmm. yeah. And mm -hmm. they have all these different APIs. So that was the, so the one for comments is the community API but you have the article search, archive, you have all of these. And, and each one, it'll give you a description of how to interact with it. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. right. Okay. Mm. Oh, right. Yeah, no, it's pretty cool. And I, I don't know if any other, I know there's one German newspaper that also has an API. I don't know of any other besides those two. I remember mm. at one point in, in my life, I was, I was looking for these things. And sadly, uh, not many yeah. papers have them, yeah. which is a bummer. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think um, maybe um, if you, uh, it would be good. I mean, I, I need to practice this to maybe after I can get the code for grabbing the, um, the, the, um, the comment so that to, to practice how, because I've not done something like that. So I think it will be good for me to practice. So um, uh, maybe later on I will request um, the code to do that so that I will practice from my own end. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll be happy to, to share it. Yeah, all right. So thank you very much, Justin. Um, today is a nice presentation from you. I really enjoyed the session and uh, I would look forward to uh, talking to you about the, uh, yeah, I mean, sample of the code. So that I can also practice that. Yeah. Do you know? Do you know who's presenting next week? I think I, it's, it's about Twitter. I think it is me, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, if it is you, I hope you find out soon. And if it's me, I hope I find out soon. I honestly don't. Uh... Yeah, I think it's me, right? Um. So let's see, because it's like um, it is about the. Yeah, I think you have one. Oh, I, I mean, it is me. It is actually going to be me. Yeah. It is about something like um. Uh, what what is the topic about? Let me. Um, I'm opening. Okay. Um. Yeah. Comparing Twitter archives. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I will look at. Can it. you can you remind me? I I don't um. Uh, I don't have the. Uh... What is it? I don't know where to access the uh, the sign up sheet, so I don't remember. Can you just tell me which which week is mine, and I'll make sure to have it done. Ah, uh, okay. Um, so it's there in the group. Um, I share it now in the chat as well. Oh, nice. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, oh, we're missing one. NASA metadata. So we're. we're no one is assigned that week. Uh, let's see uh, the next week so that we can see who is in, if there's anyone. Okay. Well, one thing that we can do is I guess we have two weeks until that, but um, yes. I can yes. I can get my presentation ready so that we can do them slightly out of order. Oh, yeah. That would be cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, I will, well. Uh, I will see you next week and I'm, I'll be excited okay. to see what the... So how can I get... I, go, how can you, I can, if you're gonna ask, how can you get 
get the code, I can just send it to yeah. you. I think through okay. um, Slack. Okay. Okay. Um, but one thing that you that I was thinking about if I was going to do the the Twitter archives is um, you know finding some because what what they do in that chapter is Julia and, and David they compare their own Twitter posting history and um, and I you know I, I know that you're doing research so maybe it would be cool if uh, you found two different accounts that are, are relevant yeah. to things that yeah. interest you. Yeah, maybe. Yes, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would I do. Mm -hmm. Anyway, and but that might that might be too time consuming. I don't know. No, I would look at it, especially now because I have Twitter API. Um, Twitter, oh. yeah, Twitter API. Now I have academic Twitter API allows you to grab tweets, historical tweets, like um from more than ten years back. You can access the tweet, so I can have a lot of stuff. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, All right. Thank, thank you for that. Uh, thank you very much. All right. Well, I will see you in a week. Yeah. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.